We are the authors of this paper on self-management and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. I'm Ad Kaptein, I'm a psychologist. I'm Margeet Scharno, also a psychologist. I'm Martin Fischer, the third psychologist. Okay, I'll introduce the paper and as a matter of fact the title of the paper is a perfect summary. We have discussed the theoretical context of self-management in the COPD, the content, the outcomes and how to incorporate self-management into clinical care for patients with COPD. The main point is that one should forget about education or giving information when thinking about self-management for patients with COPD. The main issue is that it centers on cognitions and emotions that patients have. And in our paper we describe how we can assess and change emotions and cognitions in order for patients with COPD to have a better quality of life. It might take a while before official COPD guidelines and the majority of COPD self-management programs will adopt a broader definition of self-management than teaching patients how to use an action plan in case of exacerbations, but recent research developments are giving some hope. For example, the most recent update of the Cochrane Review on Self-Management Intervention Studies with education as the only active intervention are excluded. This suggested that all self-management training programs should aim at patient activation and structural behavior change, a goal that cannot be accomplished by education alone. It is encouraging that some authors in the field are returning to the original work of Lorik and Holman to stress the three lifelong self-management tasks for all chronic patients, not only medical behavioral management, but also life role management and emotional management. With regard to medical behavioral management, some new approaches have been suggested, such as motivational interviewing and self-regulation. With regard to life role management and emotional management, it seems there is a considerable gap between what patients get and what they need. When asked about their needs for self-management, support patients report concerns about loss of normal functioning, loss of independence, loss associated with other medical conditions, loss of social support, fear about disease progression and panic when severely breathless. Obviously, these concerns cannot be tackled with education and action plans only. Pulmonary rehabilitation programs typically have an interdisciplinary character and consist of several core components and supplementary interventions that can be used to meet the needs of the individual patient. Rehabilitation programs usually last somewhere between 6 to 12 weeks and may be offered in an inpatient or outpatient setting. Exercise training, focusing on physical reconditioning and functional independence, is considered an essential element of pulmonary rehabilitation. In addition, most pulmonary rehabilitation programs contain some form of self-management training to support patients in coping effectively with the physical, psychological and social consequences of their illness. The benefits of pulmonary rehabilitation in terms of improvement in physical fitness and quality of life have been demonstrated extensively. However, less is known about the long-term outcomes of the intervention. On average, the gains made during the intervention will slowly disappear. This is partly because of the progressive nature of COPD, but this is also likely affected by patient self-management behavior. Therefore, an important question for future research is to investigate the effects of pulmonary rehabilitation programs on patient self-management and to determine to which degree changes in self-management behavior are related to the maintenance of the gains made during the intervention.